Welcome to another player's guide video. So today I'm going to look through the Bioshock player's guide. And this is one of my favorite games. So let's get into it. And this is a very, very lengthy book, but I think I'm just going to focus on the intro pages that kind of give some background and some helpful starting tips. Alright, so we're going to start off with the Residents of Rapture, and I should actually start by saying this game is a first-person shooter, and it's a very unique setting, which you'll find out more about, but let's get through some of the characters. And also, the city that it's based in, which is Rapture, is completely underwater. Alright, so Andrew Ryan is the man behind Rapture. It was his vision to build a city where government, religion, and morality would not interfere with the advancement of science and art. Rapture was his dream. He chose the location carefully, and by tremendous will and hard work, he made it a reality. And then Atlas is kind of the narrator that you'll hear throughout the story. Although his disgust with Andrew Ryan is evident, it seems as if his hatred for the man is deserved. Alice is your guide over the radio for much of your time in Rapture. Then Tenenbaum. She is actually a scientist. Dr. Tenenbaum was the scientist who recognized that a particular sea slug was the source of all atom and developed it into something usable. She collaborated with Dr. Su Chong to create the Little Sister Project, which gave female children the ability to harvest Adam from angels. So, not much of this will make sense right now, but basically just remember she is a scientist who helped create the Little Sisters. Now, Splicers are next, and they are the enemy that you will see running around in Bioshock. So, as it kind of says here, they used to be normal men and women, but they started using Adam. At first, they looked at Adam as purely a means to an end, a way to work harder, to improve their strength, or perhaps even look a little younger. But things didn't pan out the way they expected. So yeah, Adam is obviously very addictive, and it kind of makes normal people into these splicers. So there's different types. The first one is a thuggish splicer, the most common type, and the weakest. And then a leadhead splicer. A nitro splicer, a spider splicer, a Houdini splicer. And now, very important, we will talk about another type of character the Atom Gathers. These are who gather the atom. Little sisters lie at the forefront of Andrew Ryan's plans of domination. These seemingly innocent girls were implanted with a special atom-infused species of sea slug that turned these children into invincible collectors of atom. They travel the city through ventilation holes and only come out when one of their big daddy chaperones is nearby to protect them. For while they are invincible to damage, they mustn't fall into the wrong hands, and splicers would kill to get their hands on the atom they possess. 
The only way to get to a little sister is to destroy the big daddy assigned to her. And even then, your only options are to either harvest or rescue her. So yeah, you have to choose between those two options. Harvesting a little sister nets you 160 Adam and the guilt of knowing that you destroyed an innocent little girl. Rescuing the little sister leaves the sea slug embedded in her, but frees her from the curse befallen her. Rescuing a little sister only nets you 80 Adam, but for every three you rescue, Tenenbaum sends you a valuable reward for your efforts. The choice is yours. So ultimately, there are different endings, so you're going to have to decide how you want to play the game. And then, Big Daddies. So, these are Big Daddies, which you also saw on the cover. And like I mentioned, they are kind of like the protectors of Little Sisters. And there's different types. So you have a Bouncer, Rosie, and he attacks with this specific weapon. Alright, so life under water. Gameplay fundamentals. Alright, so it looks like it goes over all the controls. And then weapon use. Bioshock at heart is a first person shooter, which means you'll be using a lot of different weapons and squeezing off thousands of rounds of ammunition by the time you reach the end of the game. So, you want to pick up everything you can find. <laughs> and it looks like they give a few tips here. So, reload often. This goes without saying. Pick up all the ammo. Roam smartly. Make upgrades a priority for sure. And then ammo selection. So, eventually you can do upgrades and use other things. Now, plasmid use is important. It didn't take long for the scientists of Rapture to uncover a species of sea slug with incredible healing capabilities and turn it into what is known as Adam. Thanks to Adam, it was possible to create a host of genetic modifications in the form of plasmids. Active and tonics passive, then improve oneself in a number of desirable and often violent ways. Alright, exploration. So, some more tips. Stay healthy. First aid kits are your friend. You can carry up to nine at once. So, obviously, you'll definitely want to loot any enemies you take down. Find the diaries. So, throughout the game, you will find audio diaries, and you want to listen to all of them. There are 122 in Rapture, which reveal information critical to your progress. Even more so, they just give a lot of backstory that will be helpful during the game. So, snack up. You have snacks, beverages, everything for health. Now hacking. So hacking plays a big role in Bioshock since it allows you to effectively deal with the machinery in Rapture. So basically you can hack safes, security cameras, security bots, turrets, most vending machines, and even some combination locks. So you definitely want to know how to do this. It will be helpful for your gameplay. And research is also important. So the research camera. So one of the weapons you'll come across is the research camera. Although it doesn't deal direct damage to enemies, it is one of the most devastating tools in your possession. Use the research camera to take photos of enemies to earn research bonuses. 
Each time you reach a new bonus level, you'll gain an advantage over that enemy. So sometimes you'll get boosts, tactical advantages, or even hidden tonics. So definitely do that. And then you'll come across a lot of vending machines as you play the game. The Circus of Values is one of the common ones, and you'll find a lot of different things. So, first aid kits, of course, are very helpful. Ammunition. But keep in mind, you can find a lot of stuff too. So, make sure again you're constantly picking up items as you play the game. And that's what it kind of says here. Don't spend a penny on ammunition until you make sure you have at least seven or eight first aid kits and e-vipos. There is plenty of ammunition to be found in the environment, and it's highly unlikely that you'll ever run out completely. On the other hand, you'll need health to stay alive. So yeah, that's a really good tip. And then just some other things you can purchase things at. Gathers, garden, you invent, power to the people, gene banks, vita chambers. These will just bring you back to life if you completely lose your health. Security bot, shutdown panels, and then health stations. Okay, and now we're on the most important part, I'd say. Arm yourself. The world of Bioshock contains eight different weapons, six of which can be used to fire projectiles at enemies. One is a melee weapon, and the other is a camera used to research enemies. Each of these weapons is obtained during your progress through the environment, and the locations of each have been mapped in the city directory portion of this book. The city of Rapture is filled with enemies that drop weapons and can be collected to replenish your ammo supplies. Additionally, there are many containers that can be looted to gather up an army's worth of ammunition. Lastly, ammunition can be obtained through the many vending machines located in Rapture, which is what we just talked about. So, starting off, and it looks like they put them in order in which you'll find them. So the first one is the wrench. So, not the greatest weapon, but that's how you're going to start off. And then the pistol is next. And there's also obviously going to be options for weapon upgrades as well. And then a machine gun. A shotgun. And it just goes over the different ammunition options. A grenade launcher. Which is awesome. And what else? The research camera, which we talked about. And then the chemical thrower, which is cool because it can actually obviously throw chemicals at your enemies, so burn, freeze, or electric.
So lots of different weapons and then a crossbow. Which can also be used. So you want to be kind of familiar with all the different weapons, the ammunition, and the carry capacity and the load capacity as well. Alright, and now this looks like it goes into some information about the plasmids and tonics. So, very important. And then Gatherer's Garden. So yeah, these are vending machines where you can go once you get your hands on Adam. These machines carry all sorts of plasmids, tonics, health, and EVE upgrades, and even extra plasmid and tonic slots. Scatter all throughout Rapture. And yeah, they always have a plastic statue of a little sister next to them. So it looks like the following table contains all of the items you can purchase at a gatherer's garden machine. So this is your inventory list. So plasmids. Plasmids are genetic alterations that not only consume Eve with each use, but require active participation on your part. Skilled collection and the use of the many plasmids that exist in Rapture is paramount to your survival. While there is no denying the awesome firepower that is available for the experienced trigger man, guns alone will bring success in Rapture. So yeah, using your right hand for weaponry, you'll come to rely heavily on the left hand as well. And that's where you will use your plasmid attacks. So there's a lot of different types. And here are some of the better ones. So Cyclone Trap is one. Allows you to set a trap for enemies as they run toward you. Electro Bolt gives you the ability to launch a blast of electricity from your hand that can be used to incapacitate enemies. Enrage. An excellent plasma to use in any situation involving more than one other enemy. But it really shines when you are in a battle against a big daddy. Hypnotize big daddy. So this one is really good because it will make a big daddy focus their efforts on something else besides you. So if there's a splicer around or something else, it will go after that and ignore you. Incinerate. So you can use this a lot. You can throw fireballs your enemy. Insect swarm. And this just releases a bunch of bees on your enemies. Security bullseye. See an enemy near some unhacked security cameras or turrets. If so, hit them with security bullseye to make the security system turn on the ones it's supposed to protect. So that's really helpful. Target dummies. The target dummy will lure the enemy's attacks away from you. Telekinesis is another one. Not only gives you the ability to bring distant objects within reach through mental power, but you can also pick up objects, carry them in front of you, and hurl them elsewhere. And then Winter Blast. 
powerful plasmid that not only can be used to stop an enemy in its tracks, but also gives you the opportunity to score what amounts to an instant kill. Hit an enemy with Winter Blast to freeze it solid for a brief period of time. So that is definitely helpful as well. And then there are also 53 Gene Tonics. So unlike plasmids, tonics work passively. Their effects are always at work and impact whatever you do. Gene Tonics come in three categories, physical, engineering, and tonic. So there are a lot of them. And I agree that these are some of the better ones. Eve Link, Extra Nutrition, Medical Expert, Natural Camouflage, and Scrounger. But yeah, there are... Definitely a lot. So, 53 total... So, those were the physical tonics I mentioned that are good. Some other good ones for engineering, clever inventor, hacking expert, safe cracker, security expert, speedy hacker. And again, so many. Combat tonics, some good ones, Armored Shell, Damage Research, Human Inferno, Photographer's Eye, Static Discharge. So I encourage you to look them all up and see what you might be interested in using. And then this is just about the you invent machines where you can kind of do some crafting of different inventions. So you just need some different ingredients to make these items, which can be helpful based on what you're trying to in the game. And then, the story begins. So, welcome to Rapture. Our story begins somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean, in a time when enjoying a cigarette on an airplane wasn't a federal offense, and the only thing short about the stewardesses was the length of their skirts. Yes, indeed, the skies were still friendly back in the 1960s, and having a ticket for a transatlantic flight was a surefire sign that you were special, just like your mom and dad always knew you would be. Of course, the problem with believing that you are destined for greatness is that sometimes you have to prove it. For the nondescript every man occupying seat 11C, that time is now. Jack has no idea what is in store for him in the coming moments, but his plane is about to crash, and he's going to be the only survivor. The choices he makes in the hours following the crash will cause far-reaching effects in a world he knows nothing about. That world is rapture. And that is the start of the game. So hopefully that little overview gave you some good starting information. So if you enjoy physical books versus looking stuff up on the internet, if you need help, I'd suggest picking this up. And I should also mention if you do end up enjoying this game, if you play it, there's also a Bioshock 2, which I really love. And the Bioshock 3 
So let me know in the comments if you ever played this game and enjoyed it, or if you plan on playing in the future. Thanks so much for listening, and if you would kindly subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this, I would really appreciate it. See you in the next video.